in this example, it would be quite easy to hold a peer review of the presentation in a face-to-face class. Simply have students give their opinions on how appropriate each group's observations were and how well they presented the information. This should serve more conversation with the guidance of the instructor. In an online course, peer reviews can be held using a simple discussion thread or a voice thread. So what about these examples of considered active learning? In our face-to-face and online class examples, the small group discussion is active learning, as is the preparation for the presentation, the presentation itself, and the peer review of the presentation. Looks like a lot of the students will be staying in the old classroom today. Okay, so I thank you so much for your attention to come here. Okay, thank you. Welcome back. Um, I'm looking for your coming. Let's do some activities. Okay.
you are not going to be her or his partner for the post semester. You're going to tell me who is going to be a partner by the end of this week. Okay? So you need to make friends with classmates in this class. And um, I would like to create an environment where you would feel comfortable with making friends. But it's also important that you participate in activities of this class as a peer first. Okay, so you have a focus party to interact with. Now let me check if the air conditioning is on because I feel yes, it's on. This is not on. That's the reasons why. Okay, and let me see. Now that is on. All right. Yes, that's good. All right. So I just want to make sure that everyone here is going to be comfortable. All right. As usual, when we begin each class, I'm going to ask some questions. What have you learned as of last class? So if you look at the public discussion forum of this week, I've already posed this question. What have you learned as our second class on the 27th of August? Now I would like each table of you to engage in one to two minutes conversations. Okay? And then we have three minutes time to invite you to go to this discussion forum and type up your responses. Okay? Very soft, up to the point. You have two minutes discussions of what we have learned as a last class. And then you have three minutes time to come on board here, click in this discussion forum, and type up your responses. This, this is a five minute morning exercise. Okay? It is also an important exercise to begin each class. Okay? It's a very important thing to do. Refract and then type up something. All right? Just talk with your labor in your particular table. Uh, and in the meantime, I'm trying to slide open the door to welcome the other students. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen. So we have eighteen students now. Eight more should be coming. If I can understand correctly about the, the number of students in this class. Okay. Yes, you're free to talk. Make some noises, all right? So this is a five-minute exercise. Talk with your leg, uh, your partner on the table, and uh, use the remaining time to type up your responses, okay? So you need to develop the habit of getting on by uh, with your mobile devices, and then you have the chance to type up your responses. Five-minute morning exercise. students be coming, alright? That will be great. It's a very good science of the class where we could really help each other to get in touch with one another. Okay, so here we go. Remember you can always watch the video of the last class by clicking links on this, okay? The video is already here. Okay. So but of course, you don't watch it now because you don't have much time. That five minutes time, I will probably stop you when uh, ten twenty comes again, and I will be checking on your discussion form. All right. So it's very important to begin today's work by reflecting, uh, using a little bit of your time on what we did as of last time. So it's very important. Uh, this is a very good class when you set this discussion for now. So, I was great, you have an iPad there, uh, you have a mini pad there, well, that's very good. At least all of you have, a, have some kind of devices, right? Okay, have some kind of devices. Okay. Very good. What have you learned as of last class? Of course, you can always refer back to the website. Um, in the website, for the first week of the class, we do have uh, a lot of things, okay? A lot of things that we discuss. And particularly, you know, in the second class, we help to understand what is meant by active learning. Okay, active learning. Very good. Now let me try to see what's happening here. And the activities will be coming up, okay? Uh, it just a couple more minutes, all right? I give you uh, minutes to do that. 
the maturity of this class to be visible when I can say that you should expect activity of this kind in every car. In a five minutes time, you can see that a lot of activity coming up, and you can read your fellow students' responses, and you know how they responded by doing something after class, and you can always make up for it, okay? And then you will be catching up, all right? So, yes, feel free to continue talking. I will invite you to uh, say a couple of things after our morning exercise in five minutes of pre-class discussion, okay? It's very important. We want to make sure this class is a class where you really can pick up uh, something, and my job is to produce a learning of you, and you can talk, it into your feet. Oh, by the way, uh, you can always bring food in here. It's just like, uh, not like any other classroom, you bring the drinks and foods in. All right, okay? As long as you clean it up after that, all right? So let's see if we got some responses. We start to have some responses now, okay? Um, everybody's typing in, let's keep going. Um, we would like to see some very interesting responses. What have you learned? Okay. Uh, but remember, the theme of the first week of the class is called coming to terms with a web 2.0. And remember, uh, last Thursday, I shared with you the ideas of web technology. In particular, Web 2.0 technology. And what it's all about Web 2.0. Remember the kind of features here. And what happened? Um, behind the 2.0 game, the Web 2.0 game, uh, when we think about Amazon's eBay today, are they champions or are they losers? And what are the impacts of this kind of things on your living? All right? So we would like to see you producing something. Okay? Alright. Very good. Alright. Two faces. Let's keep going. We want to see some responses. Alright? Keep going. It's very important. That if you do something in class, you can have a speed. Now, this is the third class in the semester, second week. Okay? That's why teacher need to use a fan here to make sure your your stove is working and then everybody is doing something very good. Can you get on that? Okay. Yes, it's very good. You can, you can get on that, right? No problem. Okay. Can you get on that? Can you get on that? Oh, that's good. That's good. I need something. I need something. Yes. Remember, when you reply on this, click on the reply button here. What you need to do is you click on the reply button here, and then you type in something. After you type in something, you just need to say pose to the phone, okay? Two actions, click on the reply button, type in something, and finally make sure you pose to the phone. That's what you need, okay? That's what you need. Very important, all right? So, let's see. Responses already. 
Yes, you see that? Ooh, that's very good. We got the line participations. I learned about 2.0 and about 3.0. Last week I have seen the video of the Buddha. I think the video can remind us to be careful about the crime that could be uh, done. That's from Kami. And then Kessler said, I have learned the history of the internet, also the differences between Web 2.0 and 3.0. Excellent. And then Sita said, we have talked about what is Web 2.0 and Web technology makes a lot better. That's very good. You see that? That's interactions. And then Romy said, lessons I've learned from the second class are evolutions of web technology. Um, how it started from 1994 to 2004. What is man by technology and what is active learning exactly. Very good. Keep going, keep going. You're doing excellent. Okay? So just uh, give you two or three more minutes to make sure your response will be captured. Remember those those records here, you can use them to crane your learn to learn score and also in class participations towards the end of the semester. So keep doing it. Five minutes each day at the beginning of the class ensures that you have a very good return on investment of time towards the end of the semester. Okay? So that is very important. Alright, so when it's 10.25, I need to come back to the normal class today. Uh, so you have two more minutes to go. Now, for me as a teacher, the maturity of the whole class will be visible as we continue to do this kind of exercise each class when we can manage to wrap this up within 10 minutes. Okay? Today, we, uh, this is the, the third class. We have to do it in 25 minutes, all right? So we can manage it with 10 minutes and then do it in five minutes. That will be excellent because we know that we have a class hours of very uh, precious and we need to use them to make sure we can handle something also very important other than the in-class activity. So let me just enhance it one more time. Okay. Good. We got it from Alexa. I recall learning about the history of web technology, events that happened in 1994, 2000, 2004, and 2015. Excellent. Why we not call it Web Technology 2.0, an active learning video? And then Maria, Maria, the concept of active learning, the basic information of Web 2.0 and its development and perspectives. Let's go to the benefits and disadvantage of Web 2.0. Oh, good. You mentioned disadvantage of Web 2.0, so we're going to mention more about this today. But I'm a little confused about the development of Web 2.0, especially what happened in 2000. Good question. We're going to talk a little bit more about this. Okay. Uh, in the year 2000, everybody is so much excited by the evolving technology of Web 2.0 at that time, a little bit more interactions. So they thought if we could create companies that is going to make use of these techniques, we can sell better and we can serve a customer better. And a lot of the company come up, but they did not produce anything yet. They have a lot of good ideas. They have a lot, a lot of venture capitalist money. But in one year or so, they do not produce anything. Okay? And because of that, they say that the company said, you are just talking, you're not doing anything. No impact. And so, bust. No one trusts this kind of games anymore. And so, what happened? Only a few companies left, like Amazon, eBay, okay? Uh, not even Microsoft at that time look at the, the internet. Uh, confidence, okay? But now it's different when you look at Windows 10, all right? So, we are going to give a little bit more of the histories. Okay, now, it's 10.25 now. So, we are going to get back to uh, the class today, and I will let you read the responses. About the Thank you. Ah, you have a chance to choose a table, because I cannot let you sit alone, okay? That is what we call the offense. When the offense come, she has a chance, he has a chance to choose a table poll. I'm sorry, I, we're talking about each table has two students. But when the students were late to come in, uh, because we do not want to embarrass you by sitting on one table, you can choose one table, okay? You have to create a table with at least one partner. Next step, you come early, all right? So, okay, let's get back to the uh, business of this week. Now, I would like to answer uh, some questions about homework, okay? Some students are very conscious about what are the homeworks they need to do, sir? Um, 
What do we need to do at the end of each class? Okay, now let me go back to day number one. So in day number one, we invite you to look at submissions. The submissions indicates that uh, throughout the semester, we have three important assignments. Uh, that is the learning contract number one, which is going to be due in week number four. Learning contract number two, which is going to be due in week number seven. And learning contract number three, due on week number ten. Now the question is, what do you need to submit as the artifacts of these learning contracts? Okay, so you have to take into this link. Each of the learning contract have a link for you to refer to. For example, here I said, well, for the learning artifacts of this learning contract number one, each one of you, even though you're doing group work, okay, each one of you has to submit your work individually. You cannot rely on your partner to submit something for you. If you believe that is the case, you will lose the point. Okay? You must remember, submit something on your own. On your own. Alright? If you don't submit anything on your own, you will lose the point. So it include, or better say the artifacts include, one learn, learning journal, okay, which is based on a topic of interest that you choose. Only one journal, which is based on one single topic you choose. Now the question is, which topics should I choose? Where can I choose some interesting topic? So keep that in mind. The second one is one online discussion forum recording. That means you are given discussion forum, right? You are doing discussion forum today, although you do not expect any response from the whole class yet. But when you have a learning partner by the end of this week, your learning partner is a very important person to help you to get done the second call online discussion forum because you will be given a peer discussion forum where two of you will engage with one another in discussing the topics of interest. For example, the two of you will have two topics, one from one partner, the other from the other partner. Okay? You engage your partner to talk about your topic and your partner will engage you to talk about his or her topic. So you have two sets of discussion leaders. Alright? So what you need to do is to extract the discussion detail that you engage your partner to talk about for your topic and copy and paste it in a Microsoft Word document and submit it. Okay? You understand how to copy and paste in a Microsoft document? Alright? So, journal, based on topic of interest. And how are you going to write a journal? We'll talk about it today. The second is the discussion forum detail, and you know what I'm trying to get to you. The third is a report. Oh, that's good. A report contains two topics. One from your partner, one from you. Okay? And the two topics will contain two sets of information. And when the two sets of information emerge, it becomes one report. And the two of you submit the same report, which contain two topics. Okay? Learning partner has to control individually. And then enable your partner to know your topic and you have to enable your partner to know his or her topic okay okay so that is the report and then the block the block is summary is a summary of your report particularly on your topic normally the report will be 10 page and the block will be one page okay not more than 500 words it could be less all right so a block is a summary so you start out with a topic write a journal on the topic what are the characteristics of a journal? A journal is something like something that could be um, a collection of things. It has not to be in a very organized, systematic way, like in a formal report. A journal is just notes, resources, such as references, ideas. And not only is it in a point form, okay, but you have to capture all of these based on a specific topic of your interest. Okay. And we have a specific way of doing report, and I'm going to tell you in a minute. Okay? So you start out with selecting a topic, doing a little bit of the findings of a topic in the form of delineating them in your journal, and that would be good enough. Okay? This shows that you start out with selecting a topic and do some preliminary research on the topic. Then you share some of the findings of the topic in the discussion forum. You discuss with your learning partner, and if she is going to remind you something, and so you polish the topic, do a little bit processing of the topic, and everything you did there in a conversational way, but it must be in a written form 
through the discussion forum, and then you extract the discussion detail, and you can produce it as your second piece. So it's a process. Handling the discussions of the topic is the second step. Selecting the topic is the first step. Doing a little bit of the research on the topic is the, the intermediate step before the discussion. Once you've done something, you've got some idea, you share it in the discussion forum, have the details there recorded, you finish the discussion forum, and the two of you will come up with enough of the findings so that each one of you will separately go to write a report based on your finding. And on the report, uh, in the past, I say not more than 10 pages. It could be between five to 10 pages, okay? And there is a format for the report, okay? So there's a guidelines here, okay? So you click on the main notes of the guidelines. And then the block is, oh, I finished writing my report. You finished writing my, your report, you put them together. Now I'm going to tell people, what have I learned in this topic? So I must tell them in a way that it's easy for them to understand and it can make sense to me, so I want a block. It's a block is a concise description of your learning of that topic after the discussions of it, after the report writing of that, after your thinking about it. So basically it's a process of think, read, and write, and discuss. Okay? So it's, uh, these are the one, two, three, four important elements of artifacts. And after that, I give you a chance. I say, you can come up with a proposal of something that really came into your mind during the time, which is actually four weeks before you submit this, that you may come up with different ideas or different topics you want to do. So if you write a proposal on this topic, you will get points out of the proposal. It's very simple. They contain the name of the topic, Okay, it contains three specific questions on the topic, and also contains three to five relevant references of the topic, like book, chapter, or journal, magazines. You list them out in a in a, what we call a formalized manner, and then you need to write a rationale of the topic, telling people the significance of this topic in not more than two hundred English words. Okay, so it could be fit into one A4 paper title, three questions three to five references, and a simple paragraph. That will be a proposal, okay? So that means each one of you need to come up with a proposal of what you want to do. And then the two of you in your, in your pair, since you were pair in the third week of the first learning contract, have two weeks time talking with one another in this room during content hours, also in this classroom during the, the, the weeks. So you need to put together some of the meeting minutes of your discussion. Now that is a different thing from the discussion forum. When you have a meeting, you organize such as oh, when we are going to meet, uh, in how many times a week outside of the classroom, what we're going to talk about in each meeting. So it's a rather uh, what we call effective way to record the housekeeping things of your work. Okay? And the discussion forum is the core details of the discussions of the topic. Okay? So based on the meeting minute, the two of you could actually uh, have a good follow up of what you need to do um, based on things that would be important. So that will be the artifacts you need to prepare. Now, if you go back to the website, okay, you can see that in at the end of the first four weeks, this is week number three, this is week number four, you will have the submission names. Okay? You submit things through the submission names. Journals, pair discussion forum detail, your uh, discussions report, which contain two topics, your individual block, okay? and then your proposal, and your meeting minutes. Okay? And after that, I have a questionnaire to ask you for doing some feedback. Okay? You understand that? And today, it's, you start from September 20, and not for like two days time to submit. So 20 is the due date, but you can submit up to the end of 21st, or something like this. And one week after your submissions, you can check the grade here on the report. You click on each one of this link, you will see the score of the individual item. Okay? And it will be something like this in this class. All right. So we have three different, th three different times for you to submit things. And on each time, you can see the submission links there and the assessment report there. Okay? So this will be the assignment. Now, let me try to answer the individual questions like, 
Oh, sir, we finished um, two days of classes last week. Uh, what do we need to do today, after, the, after today's class? And normally I welcome questions like that. I say, oh, there are many things you can do, but you have to understand what you do now is considered exercise that may or may not be need to be submitted because it's your decisions want to submit again. This will be part of that's great. So in order to help you to understand what you need to do, uh, at the end of each class, you have to come back to the week, OK? For example, this is week number one. Remember this particular link that I, I, I told you last week. There is a link here for each week called before class activity, during class activity, after class activity, end of the week activity. Now, I do not know how many of you have clicked into the link, but I just opened up the link this morning, all right? Just to show you the example of last week. For example, last week, before class, I told you, well, I give you a message. I tell you the study of the GE program information from the University of Macau's undergraduate curriculum reform. So you click on this particular link, you will be brought to a particular page. You understand the, the work done at the University of Macau to help you understand the meaning of high gender education. Okay? So I would like you to do that. Actually, it's included in the teacher's message for week number one. And you finished reading my message, okay? So let's go back here. Um, this is the before class activity. And then I say, well, at the end of this week, oh, don't worry much about it. If you belong to section one, you click this link. If you belong to section two, you click this link, okay? Because I have two sections here. So at the end of last week, and I invite you to complete the first week of class question. How many of you have done this? No? Can you do it today? Because uh, if you look at the calendar here, there is something called upcoming event, and the uh, first week of class questionnaire has been extended to the 2nd of September, okay? So you need to click into this link, and there's a question you fill it up, all right? So things like these are very important. That's why you need upcoming events here. And of course, you know that because of this is an official holiday for this year, it's staying here too, all right? So it's a, it's a very important management system. Learning management system, you didn't come back to get yourself there. All right, so having said that, you understand that this is the before class activity. So this week, I, we also do before class activity. Uh, if you look at this, this is week number two here. You click on this link, okay? I invite you to start doing your reading from the reading list. In week one's reading list, we have two important questions. What is information technology? Actually, this is week number two, it's not week number one. I invite you to put into perspective this two important questions because that is this week's focus, all right? So that is before class activity for this week. So your job is to make sure no one is going to push you, okay? No one is going to ask you to do what to produce, but you know that this is something you need to get yourself updated when you come to class, okay? <laughs> During class, what we talk about, we have the videos there, we have everything we discuss on uh, online here. You come back to this website and you can always get yourself updated. Okay? So now, let's go back here. Week number one. The second thing during class activity is, last week, okay, during class, we invite you to study the Learning Center syllabus. We introduce you to the course support environment. We walk you through. And we introduce to you what is active learning. But beside that, okay, if you're interested in what is meant by 21st century education, you can come to click on those things. And what is meant by the four C's of the 21st, 21st century education, you can come to this link. Actually, this is uh, introduced also by uh, the Dean of the Faculty of Arts and Humanity uh, on our orientations day. It's very important. And I'm practicing the use of branded learning. That means besides the face-to-face -face hours that we're having today for every on uh, Monday and Thursday, because of the websites here, the Moodle environment, this website, you also have the opportunity to study something online without my presence. So there's a branding, face-to-face -face interactions with online learning, with a blended learning. And then, last week, we didn't explore the other things, but we, we, we helped you to understand the meaning of Web 3.0. Now, if I were you, when I come to this page, I would like to take a look at this, Head Talk. It's that how Web 3.0 will change our lives. 
And indeed, it's a 16, 16 minutes. We are going to, if we have time today, need you to watch this pet talk today. It's a very important talk, okay? The impact in quality. And so, having done during class, after the class, what do you need to do? Now, that's what I'm telling you. That's what I invite you. That's a last week. This is the week number one's reading list. What is web technology as an impact in life? We discussed a little bit in class. The same questions, what is information privacy? Okay, have we touched that? Not yet. That's why I'm trying to get to today. A lot of the things to get to today, right? So you, you have to get yourself updated, all right? Because we are in the course loop. And so at the end of that, I say you need to do some review of the support video. And you need to write some notes in your online journal each week. Okay, uh, in the London section one, you can use the online learning journal to start joining down your notes on a specific topic. Because you need to get yourself ready for the submissions of the first learning contract. And remember, it's you who's going to tell you what you would like to submit, what topic. I'm not telling you which topic. It's you who's going to tell you. You need to submit the topic that you choose and as the teacher. I will want to learn what you choose and what you have prepared for me to learn, right? It's not just I'm giving you something, you're giving me a lot, okay? So, and when you share that topic, all right, in the social discussion forum of the week, the whole class can learn from you. All right, so that is the after class activity of last week. And so let's go to the uh, end of the week activity. Okay, the end of the week activity tells you, well, now you have um, selected reading for that week, and so you need to do some refractions. What you've learned from that, and you've chosen a topic, you write some notes on that, what you've learned from that. And if you have actually learned something from that, Okay, you please review this with before class, during class, after class, end of the week, and take a look at the teacher's message of the week. And then, my job is, I'm going to share, I invite you to share your, your work done during the week in the social discussion forum of that week. So that you, you're trying to see how many of, of your fellow students are interested in asking questions for that. Now, no one is going to ask you something, I anything. But if you keep this pattern of learning, and you know that, if each one of you keep this pattern of learning, you're learning a lot. Now we have 22 students in this class. If each one of you is going to produce something, you have 22 sources each week to select your, your knowledge. And you, you can actually use a lot of resources produced by your fellow students. And they can use the results produced by you. And that is what a newspaper is going to work. Every day, local newspaper, a lot of good things. You learn it, but we do not use them all. All right? If you can galvanize this cycles of active learning, oh, your future is unlimited. All right? So, how many of you have done this? I invite you to do some icebreaking for yourself. Well, the best class I ever had in the past what the teacher did in that class and what the student did in that class. The worst class I ever had, what the teacher did on that class and what the student did on that class. Have you ever shared that? I have not seen it yet. I'm looking forward to see it in your discussion forum of this week. The first day graffiti, and I'm back in classes where the teacher, if you're in the sentence, students in courses help me learn when they, I am most likely to participate in classes where Drains are ready, chips are ready. Uh, here is something that makes it hard to learn in the course when this teacher become very bored and we have to be very silent. And, okay, and here is something that makes it easy to learn in the course. So, the, what are the five things faculty do that makes learning hard? What are the five things faculty do that makes it easy to learn? Okay, and then eyes breaking, you can ask. Write a simple biography of yourself and pose it in the social discussion forum so everybody knows you better. Remember, by the end of this week, you need to name your learning partner. You better learn more from your fellow students by reading them all the biography post. Have you done this? If not, well, think a little bit about this before this Friday. You do a little bit of that so that the whole class will know you better. So when you try to choose your learning partner, you have something to start with, all right? 
do I know you enough that you're a reliable person or you just want me to do something for you and my grade is your grade and don't do with anything but if we have meeting to meet, you say you come but you never come, something like this. Alright, so it's very interesting. All right. So this is week number one and so week number two uh, as I mentioned, we do have the before class activity for today. And I would like to invite you uh, to pay attention to the learning practice for this particular learning contract. And we're doing a learning practice for this particular learning contract. Uh, we started with Web 2.0 last week. And this, the first topic is introducing to you all the features of Web 2.0. And the second topic is protect your privacy and security. Now that is what we would like to do with it. That's the 10 minutes. So let's start with what is meant by privacy and security. Okay. Keep that in mind. Let me give you some uh, icebreakers. What is information security? When I say security breach, what's the first thing that pops into your mind? Someone hacking into your bank account or dumpster diving for confidential material? In fact, the majority of security breaches happen in the workplace unintentionally. Many employees are still uninformed about the type of information that needs to be protected. The documents that put people and businesses at risk are things like invoices, reports, and employee records. Anything that shows customer, employee, or company information. And this is the stuff that can lead to identity theft, which is a huge problem today. 9 million Americans and close to 2 million Canadians are victims of identity theft every year. Mishandled, lost, and stolen papers are often the cause. Identity theft costs victims in the U.S. about $5 billion every year. Altogether, nearly 20 million hours and over $150 million are spent trying to resolve the problems created by fraud. But you know, there's a really simple solution. Document destruction. Shred all documents when you don't need them anymore. A shred all policy means that every office document is destroyed. No one person has to decide what is or isn't confidential. Here are some simple tips to avoid potential security breaches in your workplace. First, identify risks that may threaten the security of confidential information. Know the life cycle of documents in your office, from generation to storage to destruction. Then, create a security culture so that all your employees and suppliers value confidentiality. And finally, train your staff on a shred-all policy. Don't leave it to chance because no one can be right 100% of the time. Shred it, making sure it's secure. Thank you. It's a good commercial. All right, he is doing commercials, but he, he did a good job. He introduced some very important concerns in our daily living. That it's the information security and the information privacy in our personal life. For example, let me try to make it expressive to you. Most of you have used credit cards, and I believe you have credit card. Okay? And the most important things about your credit card is it could be used to buy something. Okay? And how can I use it to buy something if I know your credit card number? Mostly, I still can use it in certain areas that the security concern is not very high. But if I would like to really make sure that I can make the best use of credit card number and I can do everything I want, I want to buy a Ferrari for it, okay? So I would like to peek into the back of your credit card and look at your security code. And if I got your credit card number, if I also got your security code, which is not difficult again, I can use the information that should belong to you, but now in my hand to steal your identity and use your identity to do something of my desire that is called identity threat. I could go to the supermarket or not to buy something. I could go to Amazon or not to buy anything. And then it's not on my charge. It's on your charge, but it puts it in my hand. You see that? So in order to avoid sensitive information, my or yours not to be at the bad hands or the hands of the bad people, the shared company said, 
take care of the paper documents. For example, after you use a credit card, you have to sign a small piece of paper. It's called a SNEET. Where do you keep your credit card transaction stick? You just throw it in a dustbin? Ah, a lot of people love it. They search the dustbin for things like this. Okay? All right, so you understand the meaning of that. Never give a chance to the hackers, particularly the bad guys, to have a handle on your sensitive information that is very unique to you. Or we buy into a very bad situation that is mentioned in last week. Remember, have you watched this documentaries at home? It's a 25 minutes documentary. Watch it and you know the cases for today. All right, so having said that, let me introduce to you information security, what you need to know. Not many of us could leave our houses or cars unlocked or leave valuables unattended. But when it comes to information, we tend to be less careful. Just look at the phone hacking scandal. Many of the victims left their passwords set to the factory default setting of password, which made it easy for hackers. It shows that we need to be more careful with information about ourselves and that which we handle for others. So this is what you need to know about information security. Most of us, whether at home or at work, have a huge amount of data on computers, smartphones, storage devices, tablets and on paper. There's so much of it we can become complacent, perhaps mixing everyday documents with sensitive information, then treating them as if they were all just ordinary files with nothing important on them. But what if these files got into the wrong hands? Embarrassment? Inconvenience? Public scandal and dismissal? A lot of information security is about being more aware of the risks we're taking. Personal information may seem unimportant to you, but to a criminal, it can be the key that opens doors. We need passwords for everything these days. This is Laura, and she uses them a lot. This one looks pretty secure, and she knows not to write it down. But here's the thing. She uses the same passwords for lots of different websites. The same one for her social media as her online auction account, her bank, and her amazing.com account and for some site she had to register for. Criminals capture usernames, passwords and personal information from bogus sites. It's one of the most common ways that criminals get our details. So using secure passwords is important, but it's also important to use different ones. And passwords are just the first line of defense. For important information, encryption makes it almost impossible for criminals to use the data, even if they do get through to it. That's why people often encrypt data on laptops or USB memory sticks. Encryption is also used to make data transfer through the internet more secure. Websites that are using encryption have an HTTPS address and a padlock symbol. Look for this if you're buying something or using a bank account or getting a quote for insurance any time when personal details and information are involved. But what about information on paper? We can be just as careless with written or printed documents. You may have heard of government officials with confidential documents on display, walking past photographers, or putting correspondence in public litter bins. It seems so obvious, but have you ever left any documents with confidential information lying around? In a briefcase, on a desk, or on a computer monitor where someone could see it, copy it, or print it off? Ever hit reply to all on an email and not check who it was going to? It might just be embarrassing, but it could be worse. A lot worse. Sometimes, though, it's more a case of stopping others gaining access. You wouldn't let a stranger follow you in through your front door. So why do people do this in secure areas of work? It's called tailgating. It might be a little embarrassing to say no or ask for ID, but look what happened in this case. An imposter went into a bank, posing as an IT person come to fix a computer. Instead, he installed a small piece of software onto the system which allowed hackers to see what was being typed on the bank's computer and use this information to transfer money from the bank to their own accounts. Criminals tried to do something similar on Laura's computer at home by trying to install what's called malware. Fortunately, she had an antivirus and protection software up to date and it stopped the hackers before they did any damage. Credit and debit cards are prime targets for criminals. Some clone them, while others watch over your shoulders you enter your PIN code before stealing your card and using it. Look out for these so-called shoulder surfers and make sure they can't see your pin as you enter it. Organised gangs of criminals are stealing information at such a rate 
that the cost of a credit card number and bank account details is about the same as the price of a cup of coffee. Criminals are always looking for new ways to get our information and use it for profit. Here are three things that may help to make it harder for them. The first is to be more aware of what information you have, how important it is, and how secure it is. Second is to assess what could happen if you lost it or it got into the wrong hands. And third, make sure you have adequate precautions in place to protect it. Although it may be difficult for us to see the value of the information we handle every day, we need to get into the habit of protecting our own and others' information in the same way as we look after our valuables and the things we care about. That's very good. Um, I just want to remind you a couple of things. You all have used passwords, okay? And you need to choose a password that is strong enough not to be easily hacked by the hackers, not to be easily tested or guessed by your fellow friends, all right? So, oh, you can know my password. You know what's my birthday? Oh, good, all right? So, and then another thing is, um, um, please be sensitive to any piece of information you provide online. I have students who inform me um, in one or two summers before 2015, she applied for a summer job and the work, uh, the work she needs to do in order to submit the application so fill in an online form but some of the items seem to be very unreasonable okay? they have extracted everything you have including your family income even though you're not earning and then your sensitive bands and you have a kind of which band I don't even tell you things like this when they apply for a particular job even you hire me you want to uh, provide salary to me through a specific banking account. That is business. That's so easy that I can do later. You don't need to ask me for my bank at this point. So I've uh, got to be have that kind of awareness that whatever information you provide to people or when they ask for it, what are they going to use it for and in what way? Okay? And when you submit a, a, a copy of your ID card, you have to be sure that they will destroy them, shut them at the end of using them. All right? So it's very important. So when you come to the, uh, this particular learning practice for um, learning contract number one under web 2.0, the key term is malware. Malware is a kind of software that you can uh, hardly detect when it is already in your computer. But normally, they will be introduced by some kind of email inviting you to visit a particular link, click a particular button, that is a permission you're going to give to a particular software to get into your computer or your mobile devices and they will install that kind of software or malware in your uh, computer or devices. The malware will enable the hacker to track where you are, to detect what you press in your key button, to extract the password for different account, and they will use them later to pray your will, steal your identity, to do things not to your knowledge until you have experienced the harm. So malware is the term you need to know. Okay? So a couple of exercises here that uh, that suggest that you go through uh, particularly the discussions on what is meant by a strong password. You can easily type in to Google what is meant by a strong password you're about to advise over there. Alright? So let me finish that. So the other things I would like to introduce to you today, uh, before I forget, it's something called, you need to write a journal, right? So in order to write a journal, it's considered as a kind of online activity, okay? So when you click on the online activity link of our course support website, you will see that there is something that's very important, this is your assessment. So when you click on what is meant by online journal, now here are the expectations, basically, uh, I would like to enable you to do inquiry-based learning. So inquiry-based learning means asking the appropriate question. That means you start off with a process of observations. You come to the process of interpretations of the data correct. Interpretation means learning to ask the right questions. And then you come to the state of applications, asking the question, what lessons I learn? So when you do a journal, whatever topic you want to 
choose, you need to go through the OIA process in order to write a journal. Now, it's not going to be difficult, but it's one way to train your thinking, okay? With an objective idea, what do I have about this topic? Search the web and copy some links, look at some of the things that interest you. Once you've done all the information discover, you need to try to ask questions. What am I going to use this information for? What are some need I need? Need questions I need in order to ask the right questions. So instead of a lot of information, it's just a number of essential questions. Essential questions would, can always need us to learn a little bit more. The less is for more. A lot, a lot of things you can do about it. Less is for more. And application is the lessons learned. Remember, lessons learned. Remember, steps of explorations. Remember, discovering enough information to take off the steps of exploration. So it's to come to the lessons learned. Now, this is something you need to study. Come here, study the notes here, and try to follow the patterns. I will give you examples later on, all right? But you can follow it. So after that, I would like to bring back to a couple of minutes here, just a couple of minutes, to enable you to understand the meaning of IBL. Okay, inquiry based learning. So, Jamie, can you give us a definition of IBL? Oh. Well, I, I think it's quite difficult to define IBL. I think it means a lot of different things to different people, depending on if you remember a staff or a student or what kind of discipline or subject you're doing. But, I think in kind of general terms, it's about putting questions and ideas at the centre of learning, so student investigations and getting students to do research instead of kind of finding out the answers for themselves, instead of directing them and telling the answer and expecting them to remember it. I think people learn and remember things and are able to reuse them much more effectively if they found them out for themselves than if than if they just been told it and expected to remember it. Hi Laura, can you give us a definition of IBL please? Um, for me, inquiry based learning, uh, there isn't one answer. Um, so I would have to say that it's a, a, a real variety of things. Uh, it can be working alone independently, going away and researching something for yourself, and really making the topic your own, making the information your own, um, and then creating your own knowledge base. Um, or it can equally be network learning. So uh, a combination of working with different people um, within staff, but also with other sort of peers, other students. Um, and again, sort of researching through sort of discussion and then evaluating the information that you've got and turning that again into a new knowledge base through your inquiry. Now, we're going to leave you today with this question. Inquiry-based learning, what do you think, okay? What do you think? That is a very interesting question. I will post the discussion spread in our discussion forum. And so lastly today, um, I need to take attendance, although I do not understand why attendance lost for last week. So allow me to take attendance for today, uh, taking into account the risk that uh, some of the data might be missing. I already checked with the uh, I think your people, I think, are going to get some answers uh, by the end of the day. But anyway, we can do something first. Okay. So.
Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. And then we said, Kaslik. Kaslik, thank you. And then Bobo. Bobo. Are you Bobo? Not Bobo. Okay. All right. So Zita, thank you. Uh, Kavi, thank you. And then it says Ariel, thank you. Rene, Rene, thank you. Uh, Manhin, Manhin, are you here? It's not here yet. Okay. So we're going to look for some more. Adia, Adia, is it Adia? Okay, not yet. Okay, Popo, Popo. Right, thank you. And then Hector. Yeah. Are you this one? So Adia? Okay, thank you. And then Eric? Eric, are you here? Thank you. All right, so Maria again. Thank you. So thank you very much for the excellent uh, attentions and enjoy this particular class. I'm going to see you again here in this classroom for the rest of the semester. All right? See you back here on Thursday. So that's it for today for CISG 114, section 1, day number 3, uh, August the 31st, 2015. See you this first. All right?